Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for this first live session of day two of ICA New Music Weekend 2023. Uh, I am going to turn this over right away to Christine, and she's going to walk you through her presentation, Visual Music, We Have Always Lived in a Castle. Take it away, Christine. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm not going to lie. This is I'm a little nervous. This is the first time um, I've kind of spoken about my work and presented about it. Um, I've actually gone through this uh, once before earlier this month for uh, another school. So... I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, let me see if I remember how to use Zoom. Share screen. Okay. Um, so uh, my workshop is uh, about visual music, um, specifically about a piece that I created called We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Um, my name is Christine. I'm the visiting assistant professor of clarinet at the Crane School of Music at SUNY Potsdam. I started teaching there um, in 2020. Um, growing up, my favorite movie was Disney's Fantasia, and I found out many, many years later that uh, one of my uncles was actually the French hornist in the orchestra under Stokowski for that film. Um, and I'm absolutely obsessed with books and storytelling. Um, both of those things, um, my love for uh, Fantasia and music and storytelling kind of led me to my work with visual music. Um, and I've been performing and working with visual media um, in different capacities for about 10 years. Um, I founded a chamber music ensemble that would perform classical chamber music in tandem with original films um, back in 2012. Um, and then we started a separate concert series, which we called Film Prof, um, that still uh, is operating and we do improvisations to silent films. So we've done um, short like Charlie Chaplin films. We've done some original films that were created by filmmakers. Um, and we've even done feature length films like Metropolis. Um, so what is visual music? Um, sometimes visual music is defined as color music. Um, for myself, visual music in my practice is a marriage of visual elements and musical elements in order to create a singular artistic experience. Um, the visual music can be abstract, it can be narrative, it can be audio reactive, and it can use images or film or uh, even lights uh, to enhance the, the experience of the audience. Um, if you've ever been to like a popular music show and, you know, the lights are timed with the rhythm of the song, that's an example of uh, visual music. Um, I've done work with audio reactive uh, visuals, but uh, the piece that I'm showing today is quite simple. And it's actually inspired one of the courses that I now teach at SUNY Potsdam. Um, I teach a course called The Relationship of Sound and Image for our freshmen. Um, I have some music majors in the class, but the class is open to uh, anyone. You don't have to be a musician to be able to participate in it. And we explore uh, visual music and the, relation, the relationship of sound and image. <laughs> so We Have Always Lived in the Castle um, includes um, elements of storytelling, film, fixed electronic media, an original composition and improvisation. Uh, we Have Always Lived in the Castle is based on the novel of the same title, written by American Gothic author, Shirley Jackson. She's prolific and I own literally almost every book, she, book and short story she ever wrote and I have read all of them numerous times. Um, she's responsible for The Haunting of Hill House. If you've seen that series on Netflix, although the series has very little to do with the actual book. Um, and she's also the author of the short story, The Lottery, which is uh, standard reading in most American public high schools. Uh, Shirley Jackson loved to explore the terrifying horrors that lurk within the evils of everyday life. Her writing is beautiful and unsettling, and I just found it so inspiring for um, my artistic work. Uh, there are some spoiler alerts in this. Um, but I still recommend reading the book uh, if you haven't. Uh, there's also a Netflix movie 
We have always lived in the castle featuring Thaisa Farmiga. Um, the book is, of course, way better than the movie, but either way, I definitely recommend uh, partaking in either. So We Have Always Lived in the Castle tells the story of Mary Catherine Blackwood, who lives alone in a decaying mansion with her older sister Constance and her disabled uncle. We learn that something's not quite right about Mary Catherine. As the book progresses, you can tell that she's really not tethered to reality anymore, and there's something quite off about this young girl. You also learn that everyone in the family is dead. And that would be because Mary Catherine poisoned them all with arsenic. That's also the reason why her uncle is in a wheelchair because he was one of the victims of her arsenic in the sugar bowl, um, but he happened to survive. And her sister and her uncle tiptoe around her trying not to um, disturb her or make her angry. As the book goes on, we learn that the monsters are not just within the castle walls, but also outside in the malicious and gossiping town people. So the performance of this piece premiered in February of 2023 as part of a series of gothic horror stories that I did for my faculty recital. Um, I premiered three works that were original and featured um, footage that retold Frankenstein um, a story of a seance, and then we have always lived in the castle. Um, this piece is about, the excerpt that I'm about to show is about five minutes long, but the complete work is 23 minutes. Um, if you go on my clarinet on YouTube or um, search, we have always lived in the castle clarinet, it'll pop up. The work was created for flute, cello, clarinet, bass clarinet. And this one um, does not use any live electronics or audio reactive elements. Uh, the flutist and cellist that I was working with um, had never really improvised before, so I encouraged them to, <laughs> to um, push their comfort level, and I tried to keep the performance as uh, simple and accessible to them as possible. So without further ado, um, this is uh, the excerpts from um, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. A lady with a book.
is dancing with their wings. All the locks are solid and tight, and there are no ghosts. We moved together, very slowly toward the house, trying to understand its ugliness and ruin and shame. Um, so for that film, um, what I did was I went through the book and I selected a series of quotations from the story and then used them to create short movements throughout the work. Um, I created a flexible storyboard in order to map out the film and what visual elements I wanted where. And then I used a combination of original footage um, and repurposed footage from the Prelinger archives. The Prelinger archives are um, part of the Library of Congress. Um, you're able to find cartoons, um, old propaganda films, um, commercials, educational videos, U.S. government videos. Uh, the majority of the films that I selected to use were actually from um, etiquette videos, like educational videos for young women on how to be a proper young girl um, and a good American girl. And I really liked the juxtaposition of this murderous little girl uh, combined with um, what it means to be feminine. Um, uh, and then I used MuseScore to design rhythmic tracks um, so that we would have some unifying elements and structure throughout the, the entirety of the work. Uh, I composed some of the flute, cello, and clarinet parts. Um, and then I also provided some guidelines for improvisation. The film was, the film and backing tracks were created first. And then I met with the flutist uh, and cellist. We watched the film together and just talked about some ideas. Um, we played through some of the improvisational soundtrack elements once or twice, um, and then performed it. Um, so, uh, what I teach in the course at Potsdam is basically how to get started with projects like this. Um, I think working in this way with um, fixed tracks and fixed video elements is the easiest way. And then once you start feeling comfortable with that, you can add in um, the more live elements, uh, live electronics, and even live reactive uh, video. So to begin, um, start off by building a catalog. Your phone is your best friend for this. Um, record things, record sound, record video, um, take photos and save them on your computer or on an external hard drive in an organized way so that you can easily access them in the future. Um, 
And then familiarize yourself with some free software. So doing cool things with technology doesn't need to break the bank and it doesn't need to be um, overly complex. So the software that I use uh, the most in the courses that I'm teaching are Audacity, MuseScore, and DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a really wonderful video editor. Um, it's quite powerful. It has a lot of capabilities. There is a bit of a learning curve for it. So some of my students prefer to use like iMovie if they have Macs, um, PowerDirector. There's tons of different ways that you can um, edit videos for free on your uh, personal computers. And I think the most important thing is to use software that you feel comfortable with and um, yeah, that just suits the needs for, for what you're looking for. Um, and then you can learn the software that you're using by exploring some audio visual concepts, um, concepts like synchronization, uh, texture, diegetic sound, which is sound that exists in the universe of uh, the film, uh, gesture, movement, ambiance and mood, uh, foley, rhythm, timbre, uh, so many of the musical elements that we take into consideration in our performances or in our compositions um, are really closely related to elements that we see uh, in visual media as well. Um, and then you can learn about resources as well um, that where you can get public domain material or Creative Commons uh, licensed material like freesound.org, the Library of Congress, archive.org, the Prelinger Archives. Um, my next project that I'm working on deals with um, gay history. And there are specific archives where you can find um, footage, stories, and oral interviews uh, specific to uh, the queer community. Um, there's so many resources out there. You just have to start looking. Um, so like I had told Jessica earlier, I actually had this whole presentation um, created and I, it, I lost it. Um, so the additional resources that I had available in the slides, I don't have on me right now, but please feel free to contact me. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, if you need, um, if you're curious about anything else. Um, and I think I have a, a sheet also that I can uh, forward along and have distributed uh, with other resources and software that I find helpful. Um, so I thought with the remaining time, we would I would show you kind of like how I get started with one. Um, so we're going to... So step one, um, create your own film. Since we don't really have time for that in this presentation, I selected a short film. I actually did get this off of um, Prelinger Archives. It's uh, not Prelinger, sorry, archive.org. This is a study that a student made on um, clay animation. I chose a pumpkin because, you know, it's the season. Uh, so once we've selected our video, I tend to brainstorm the oral elements that I want. 
Um, so I might think of diegetic sounds. So in this case, sounds that exist in the universe, footsteps, uh, maybe a sigh because he's a sad pumpkin, um, some non-diegetic sounds. So ambiance, what's the vibe? What's the emotions that I want to evoke in this? And then other music elements. How will I incorporate the clarinet to add value to what I'm creating? Um, so once I've done that, then it's time to put it together. So um, I have it queued up in DaVinci. What I did was I separated the video into three sections. The opening, where he's sad because he's by himself. The second, where he's surprised because all these little pumpkins knocked him over. And then the last one, where he's happy because now he has friends. So for the first one, what I did was I timed out how long the first section actually was. It turns out it's about 19 and a half seconds and we can see that time bar on top. I uh, created some sad ambient piano um, and I made sure that it aligned with the amount of time in the first sad portion of the clip. Uh, dragged into Audacity and then you can just like highlight to trim what you want, what you don't want. There are other effects uh, that you can do in Audacity as well if you explore. Um, I'll export. This will just save to the desktop for now. So 19 second bad ambient piano. And then be on the desktop. There it is. And I can just drag and drop it into the frame that, uh, that I want. Why won't you go? There we go. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Maybe that'll be easier. area. So now we have our sad little pumpkin who realizes that he's by himself. Um, if I'm using musical elements in the background, I try to keep it more sparse so that I'm leaving room for the clarinet that I'm eventually going to add in. Um, I know that we're running low on time, so um, some of the sounds that I had pulled that I would edit into this are sounds of footsteps, which I can use and synchronize with um, his walking, a sad sigh, some scurrying sounds for the pumpkin, for the smaller pumpkins when they come in. Um, yeah, so basically like this simple project uh, can be done in iMovie, there's no, um, complicated transitions or complicated um, editing elements. But um, by creating this, then you can compose um, your own original clarinet piece over it. And you have this visual element that just uh, can add something of uh, interest or, or value if this is something for you. I know we're, we're running, we're about running out of time. So I'll um, wrap it up there. But if you have any questions, um, yeah, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so interesting. I do see one question from Zedef mm -hmm. in the chat. How do you study for visual music with Claire? Like, how do you approach this? And, and I think you kind of covered this a little bit. It's just sort of dip your toes into it. Try to try to learn the tools first, because that's going to be the most helpful for you as you go through and then just kind of let creativity take over. Um, do you have like resources where you re that you can recommend to people who want to see how other people approach this? Obviously your own resources. Yeah, I actually have um, a, a collection of videos that I've curated on Vimeo. Um, I can send the links. I use them in my class to show um, examples of Kind of different elements that you can study like texture um gesture synchronization um so i can i can share those so that you can check them out um for me like 
I didn't have background in video editing. Um, a lot of the software though, because it is free or um, open source, there's so much online that you can learn um, on YouTube. There's tutorials, there's forums, where if you're like, oh, I really wanna do this one thing, but I don't know how to get there. Um, someone else probably had the same, the same question and that information is there. You just have to uh, look a little bit. And I, I think know, many of yeah, many of us during the pandemic sort of gained skills that we uh, didn't know that we needed to have mm -hmm. it be Zoom or video editing myself, learning how to host online events and things like that. So I think there's no better time to learn those skills and you will find that you can apply them to multiple facets in your work as a musician. I think um outside of just creating something like this, mm -hmm. but you might also think, oh, I need to learn this for for a specific thing and and not know that this is a, an avenue for you to utilize those skills. So I really appreciate you showing this to us and we really look forward to um, seeing what the next work that you do is. Thank you. <laughs> so if no one has uh, any further questions, I'm going to drop the link for the next session, which is our competition winners recital. I'm really excited for you all to hear all of these pieces. So follow that YouTube session. Um, uh, link and we will see you over there. Thanks so much, Christine. Thanks. Thank you for having me. <laughs>